All right, everyone, welcome to the Thursday edition of The Backstory. And if anyone wants to complain about no music and um, the wonderful um, intro that I have, I'm on location. I'm out in California for the week. Uh, Saturday night is my 40th high school reunion. Me and my Jesuit marauder brothers here in Sacramento or in Sacramento are going to get together and see whose names we um, maybe can remember. I'm sure the bulk of them all have no clue. But um, uh, I am down on location in San Francisco in the beach uh, area at the Ocean Beach Cafe with Josh uh, James, who we um, uh, I just did a little impromptu. It'll be on the Facebook pages if anyone missed it. Uh, but we uh, came down here real quick just because we had talked about the place and I just the mood in here, the festivity, the fun, the the variety, the atmosphere, and it's all alcohol, you know, alcohol free stuff is unbelievable. And he made me something that I can't even pronounce, let alone pronounce the ingredients. Um, but I will have all the ingredients. Uh, it, pretty simple to make, but unbelievable stuff. So if anyone is in the Ocean Beach area of San Francisco, completely well worth um, the stop. I, great food. I had a, um, Josh, what did I have? It was a steak sandwich that was. Tri-tip steak sandwich, Tri-tip tri steak sandwich that was unbelievable. So um, I met Josh through this person right here. Hey. AKA my nemesis. Peggy, how are you? I'm good. And I met, jo uh, I met found out, he but I met Josh at the event from our guest, Susie Streelman, who is the creator of Sober in the City. And he was the guest bartender who made a um, wave as you're going by. Wave as you're going by. There he goes. He made a, 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 a espresso martini that was unbelievable. Right. Um, and I, 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 yeah, I was back for those. But great stuff. And it's just fun. And the variety. And it, it was... Um, I was never a, 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 not hard alcohol, but a cocktail drinker. I just strictly did beer, but it's, it's festive. It was, it's a blast and the variety is unbelievable. So, but anyways, that's not, I'm just glad to see you both. That was a little plug for this, but having a great evening, but Susie, I'm so glad you joined us tonight. Hey, thank you. Nice to be here. We were thrilled to have Josh at Sober in the City, oh Sacramento. The I was there too, don't forget. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, we forgot. <laughs> you do look kind of familiar. Yes, <laughs> I think so. Um, but yeah, the feedback I got about Josh was, could you, could we hear more from him? <laughs> could, could he share more of his vision? You know, could we participate with him more? It was a good, a good time. And then Peggy, it's always great to see you. At least that's what you told me to say before we started. <laughs> yeah, we just, you know, we're kind of coming off a high from, uh, the NorCal recovery group that we <clears throat> that we have and uh, spent last Saturday uh, with Danny and Josh and wow, um, it was so much fun. So, and again, I have to thank my friend Susie for um, for hooking me up with Josh. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's such a beautiful thing that um, everyone is so excited about this movement and. Um, and that's why, you know, Susie's here. I, uh, I just going to start it off. Susie, uh, in, uh, is a former, oh, not a former, uh, current sober sis. Um, we started yes. out kind of our, our sober curious movement. Uh, for me, um, it was definitely putting down the glass for good, but, um, with, uh, Jen Couch's, uh, sober sis and she My application me. came back, um, denied <laughs> once again for that. Group. Yeah. Yes, um, I did. Um, um, nothing you know, to do with it. just because I got of nothing to say about that. <laughs> I'm not even going there. No. Uh, I, yeah, I'm with Peggy there. I, I don't want to get canceled before um, before I even start before my career. There. So anyway, um, you got me tongue tied now. So, so we're Susie, talking. About Susie started uh, Sober in the City, and I'm going to let her talk about it because um, she talks about it best. Um, maybe talk a little bit first, Susie, about how, you know, you're, you're sort of 
you know, we don't have um, a lot of time, but just a kind of a summary of your personal story, your, you know, your professional okay. background and how, and how, how uh, Sober in the City became part of uh, the light for okay. you. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to start back. Maybe I'm, okay. I'm Susie. I grew up in a small town just north of where you live, Peggy, in, in north of Sacramento, a hundred miles, but I have been living and been married actually over 30 years here in Long Beach. We have two adult boys. One actually lives on his boat here in Long Beach and our youngest is working remote in Guadalajara, Mexico. So yeah, I, I love golf. I love yoga, everything associated with that, veggie food, uh, green juice, just like gin, just like our friend Jen. So let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure how much time we have, but I rather considered myself an expert breaker from alcohol. So a around a dozen years ago, I was told that my liver enzymes were a little high and I should take a month off. So I did, and you'll, you'll never believe it, but the liver enzymes went down. So I was good to go. And that was kind of the beginning of my short and long breaks. And, and if you're wondering what I mean by long, I mean like the Lent season, right? Do you know, do you know how long oh, that is? 40 days. Four, yeah, 40 days. So and it's like, over a, yeah, right. And 40 nights too. Yeah. Over a month. So, I mean, I did that a couple of times, take a week off, take a month off. I've been pretty health and fitness minded most of my life. So I have run a few marathons. Um, af after the first one I did, I did realize that drinking three glasses of wine the night before a 20 mile run is, is a really bad idea. Terrible, terrible. Um, so, you know, doing those trainings, um, longer trainings too, that kind of like automatically sort of cuts things down to, you know, one of, one of my expert, expert things, cutting back, taking a break. But um, yes, like when I, met Peggy was somewhere around mid COVID. I actually went ahead and signed up for a full three month break. I just decided, Hey, you know, I'm kind of an expert anyway at it. So I'm just going to go like the longest ever for three months. So I signed up with a uh, gym couch over at sober sis and you know, that whole thing zero intention of dropping alcohol, zero intention of that. It was just a break. So yeah, right, right. You know, like uh, a cleanse, a reboot. Yeah, maybe get ready for another marathon. Um, so I was so surprised when after a few months, I just gradually started to feel more and more of a pull toward an alcohol-free life. Like it, it's still hard to wrap my head around sometimes. Yeah. Um, hey, and Susan, I, I was, oh, yeah. Susan, what was the, when you got diagnosed with um, issues of the liver, that's yeah. gotta be a crushing, I, I mean, I, it's like any other ailment, I can still continue to drink. That Did that... <laughs> Or I would have been in complete angry denial saying, I don't drink enough to have that. That's got to be wrong. How did, how did, how did you take that? Yeah, I think I, yeah, I, that's got to be wrong. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like there's probably plenty of other reasons why my liver enzymes could be high. And I don't think, you know, my doctor was particularly keyed into that either. So it was, it was pretty shocking, <laughs> Jeff, to me. Yeah, it was. And, um, and I think that's why, you know, I took the break. Yeah, they went down, but I kind of kept checking in with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of in the back of my, my mind, pretty often, you know, I often thought about 
cutting back and and I did for a time. When did yeah. it switch for you? Um, like how long? Yeah. Right. I think is what you're asking. Yeah. Because I want to say that I don't know. It, it kind of continually switched. That maybe around six months. Mm -hmm. Maybe do a little you, bit do you more. Remember what do you remember? What was the reason that you went from I'm going to do this for a little while to do you remember what made it? Hey, this yes. is what I want to do. I I do because I had been kind of working with cutting back for quite a few years. So, you know, it's sort of a numbers game. I'm going to have one glass tonight. I'm going to have two glasses, you know, maybe on the weekend or, you know, maybe I only want to have two drinks a month. You know how quickly those drinks can get used up and you know how much time you can spend thinking about, okay, if, I'm only going to have two drinks a month or one drink a week, but it's so easy for something to come up and yeah, I'll have a glass of wine mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Now I've got the groovy wine here, by the way. So that's kind of cool, but yeah, it did. It took, it freed up so much headspace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, of just, kind of yeah taking taking it out of play what did your and, family how did your family react to 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 what you're doing I think that they didn't pay too much attention yeah for uh probably at least a year yeah, yeah. but um now I'd say you know they're they're kind of proud of me I, I would say so. <laughs> I would say so. So what, when did you first hear, first have an idea that you wanted to um, do sober in the city? What, how, where did that come from? Yeah. So I would say that came from taking a longer break because when you take a shorter break for a week or for a month, I, I didn't really notice how alcohol centric um, many events are and, and many, many lives. So when you, when you're just taking a short break, yeah, you can go out, you can order a club soda, you can drink water. Um, you can have order a diet Coke, not a big deal. When it really came to that longer time period. And I love going out to dinner. It's mm -hmm. like a go-to date night. I love foodie food. Uh, I like people. I want to be social. And so I was told some of the nuttiest things <laughs> by servers. I know not everybody has had that experience, but I was told it's pre-mixed. Um, are you really sure you want that? That's not really going to taste like anything. The best we can do is a blah, blah, blah lemonade. Mm -hmm. So I sort of began to dream of a multi-course dinner where things are really set up for you. Like you're going to walk in and you're going to have like an any bubbly welcome waiting for you some past appetizers, um, beautiful food, and more like specially curated cocktails. I just started thinking about that. Like, wouldn't it be nice, you know, just for one night? Because we don't really expect that all the time. <clears throat> not, right. not in my life, anyway. It's, yeah. You know, the Ocean Beach Cafe, cafe isn't everywhere, right? <laughs> no, no, it isn't. The, the the selections, you know, I it's a it's a running joke about me and my diet Pepsi's, which I yeah I live on those, but there there aren't alternatives if you're not at a restaurant and you don't want to if you're not going to drink beer, it, it, it's it's water, it's iced tea, or it's it's a diet soda, and that and that's okay. I I'm okay with that, but yeah, there is no. There's no, yes. like, here's the treat. Here's the, you know, something, uh, the night out there, there isn't that. 
No, no. And, you know, a lot of social questions. It's, it's often hard to get an adult beverage in a nice glass. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we've all been served like very large glasses of juicy, sugary Mm -hmm. (laughs) things that we don't enjoy. It's it, and it's not necessarily the fault of it when, when that there's the options weren't there and that's what you know this this place down here with the Ocean Beach Cafe, it, it took it takes for some people coming into these even know that the that, that it's out there. And, right. And, you know the yeah, awareness. So when not, not every you you have to look for it. You do like you'll probably notice that some of our friends you know, are becoming more aware of it because of us. I mm-hmm. often get pictures of mocktail menus from other places. I, I just received a fabulous picture of alcohol-free choices in an airport in Edinburgh, Scotland, right? Um, yesterday. So it's really interesting. But like when I was first kind of thinking about this dinner, it was probably about a year ago. And I didn't realize so much yet about all the alcohol-free options. Like, I didn't know that there was a $10 billion non-alcoholic beverage market. So, I, and I think, Jot, go ahead. No, what I was going to say, but because I went to the last Sober in the City event uh, in Sacramento, and mm-hmm. what it's a sober in the city. The event s- stresses that. But within five minutes of being there, the evening had nothing to do with sobriety. The fact that there was right. alcohol-free mm-hmm. drinks, <clears throat> it's about, nice the food. focus was we were having a blast. It was about great times, great food, great you know drinks that were going around, fun drinks. But no one was focused on, oh, but we're in a you know. It was no. you could. It, it felt like every bit of the same scenarios that I remember enjoying when I was, you know, in a drinking world. Yeah, that was really fun for me. You know, it really was super fun for me in the sense that, you know, I got to show my daughter and my, and I know Susie got to show um, her daughter-in-law or at least her son's girlfriend, you know, yes. when, you, when you can bring people that are, you know, that alcohol is part of their life. And then showing my daughter that were you know, it wasn't just a, you know, um, it was everything. I love what Danny says, the bartender at, um, or the general manager at Ocean Beach Cafe. Danny goes, every it's everything but the buzz, right? It's yeah. everything. Right. That. I heard that tonight. Yeah. Susie's yeah. so Susie's so good at it, right? And I I do know that when I started three and almost uh, you know, three years, three months ago, they had Topo Chico. I mean, since I right. stopped drinking this $10 billion industry and it's just growing every day. Um, it's, 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 it's exciting to be part oh of it, God, isn't it? I, this is what I wrote down about you. I said, getting connected with Susie has changed the trajectory of my life. I am <laughs> fired <laughs> up about sober in the city. I mean, it is so true. I mean, I am so grateful to you. To even have me be part of this, this is one of the most exciting, honestly, the most exciting thing I have ever done. So, um, well, these, it these is are so exciting. Of, the, the thing about it is, and I, I've used this with a lot of things I've discovered since, you know, I quit drinking. I thought my life without alcohol, everything, it was a red light. I thought everything came to a stop. The social events, an evening like that is going to be, well, I don't, Susie wants to have an event with a bunch of, with no alcohol well are we having it at the library you know because let's just sit around and and maybe we can all just read a book quietly in the cubicles by ourselves because that's about as exciting (laughs) as it's going to be i saw it as this is just a red light and the point is to give this a shot because like i said that event within five minutes Mm -hmm. it was a green light and there was nothing it was like I, my focus was on great people, great fun, great, you know, the laughs, everything that it was supposed to be. It's interesting how each time now this is going into our third event. And so far, like each time I've connected with more people and I feel like I'm, I'm 
continue to have friendships with those people. I think the point you make is that if you walked into that sober in the city party, you and not knowing anything, I, I don't think you'd have any no. idea whether it was an alcohol that. free or an alcohol or an alcoholic event. Mm-hmm. Love it. I love that you said that. I know even before you came on, Josh was talking about this unprecedented shift. And even from January and, you know, to going to Austin, which I want you to talk about next, is that in what, nine months? It's, it is right. an unprecedented shift and really offering the fact that we deserve to be offered non-alcoholic drinks, just like um, people um, need to be offered a vegan and vegetarian menu. Right. And so at Silver in the City, Austin, you actually will be able to get a vegan entree <laughs> and a gluten-free entree and non-alcoholic drinks. There will not be alcoholic drinks served at Silver in the City. You have plenty of nights that you can try those out other places. But yeah, so we are going to be right downtown Austin. I was there just a couple of weeks ago and kind of took care of a few details, but we have kind of a speakeasy feel. Our venue is, is pretty cool. They've been so gracious with us. They have opened up additional space for us so that we could, you know, fit in almost everybody that wanted to come. So, and they're associated with, with the coffee shop upstairs and our hotel, most of us are saying is just right across the street. So like Jeff and Peggy will be hosting our Friday night meet and greet uh, in the coffee shop right upstairs. Um, and definitely looking forward to that. We're, we're going to go downstairs Saturday night, have those appetizers, the welcome champagne, um, multi-course dinner. We're going to have a DJ. There is going to be dancing opportunity and dessert, coffee. There's three separate rooms so that once dinner is over and Jen Couch, yay, will be uh, speaking to us for our keynote. We got Chris Marshall there, Amanda Kuda participating. But once that's over, you know, we're going to have three separate rooms for people to spread out in. They can stay in the dinner room for a little quieter. Um, Yacht Drops is going to be kind of turning up the music, I think, in the middle room. And then we still have a lounge for, you know, people to have more quiet and connection time. So whatever you'd like. I I think, um, Peggy, you've, you've sort of seen this has grown from a, a Saturday night event here in Long Beach to it really is a three day weekend full of activities. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit more about the activities? I can. I, I, I'll tell you what, I'm excited about my Friday afternoon itinerary because I'm actually not landing until Friday and I'm heading to Austin Sober Social uh, Happy Hour. So I think it's going to be super cool to be participating with the local community there in Austin. Uh, And, you know, a lot of us will be joining in and then I'm hitting the meet and greet from seven to nine at the coffee shop. And I think I'm just going to keep it going and head right over to Sands Bar. I, it seems like there might be 30 or 40 of us heading over there too. So, so that's Friday. Uh, Those of you that don't, um, uh, most of everyone's pretty familiar with Chris Marshall. He was, uh, featured on a uh, Good Day Sacramento. Uh, good Day Sacramento. Good Good Morning America. <laughs> I got Good Day Sacramento on the, on my brain, but he he was, um, you know, he has Stan's Bar pop ups all over the U.S. and uh, he's just an amazing, just an amazing man, just amazing. He actually uh, has a Stan's Bar Academy where you can learn to be a, a, a non right bartender. Get get more information yeah and then Saturday we do have a full day of options from coffee time from hiking from yoga journaling rock painting you know it looks like we're going to have room for most people I think that want to participate in those extras and then heading into the main event Saturday night will be kind of the big big deal 
So really excited about that. But some people are even staying for yoga and a dip in Barton Springs Sunday morning. And we are having a featured quitlet brunch to top it off. And that's, that's all. Then it's time to go. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, what made you pick Austin? Yeah, so we got a little feedback that it might be more fun to have a destination event. Yeah, I know. I'm about to bad talk Sacramento, right, Peggy? Uh, <laughs> as lovely as Sacramento is, I, surprisingly, people got really a lot more excited about Austin. And having just been there a couple of weeks ago, I can see, I can see why. A lot of restaurants, too, they're definitely ahead in the alcohol-free community compared mm -hmm. to Southern California. I went to one of their main big popular Mexican restaurants and it's in very fine print at the bottom, but any margarita that you order can be served with the option of the Jalisco 55 by Spiritless. I did, of course, when I did ask the waiter, I had to explain it to him and show it to him on the menu, but you know, it's a, it's a really good start. It's a really good start, Jeff. I think so. that's one of the most fun things to do, though, is that, you know, um, we're getting better at it. So going to, you know, restaurants, even even when uh, the NorCal group meets up, you know, well, maybe we go to a restaurant where they don't have um, non-alcoholic offerings. Um, Jack Palmer comes to mind. And, you know, really saying they said, well, you know, we can make anything you want. And I said, well, that's great. I love the fact that you're going there. But is there a way that, you know, that I know a couple bartenders, is there any way that we could help you put it on your menu? So the, you know, the more we can self advocate for that, I love it. I know that you've become a depository for all your friends, you know, sending you menus where where there's beautiful um, NA drinks offered, zero proof cocktails offered on the menu. And uh, it just it right. just feels like we're such a part of a revolution. And it it's something really proud to be part of. It really does. I mean, it seems like in 12 months, it's changed so much. It's interesting about, because even, you know, the, the drinks that, that Josh made tonight, that yeah. I got to try, it wasn't, oh, that's not bad for a non-alcoholic drink, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, right. or like I could actually choke this down if I had to. No, it was like, right. oh my God, this is delicious. And it's fun. Right. And it made me want to say, what else do you have? It was, I was, I was excited. It, it was like almost food tasting. It was good, really good stuff. And I wanted it wasn't like, okay, now that one, I could deal with that. Which other one do I have to, you know, what's going to be the least painful? No, it was like, this is, this is good stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the sober in the city, so many, you know, I was trained by my, myself and society to believe that you don't have fun at certain events without alcohol. And I right. had to give myself the chance and Sober in the City is a perfect example to go in and say, you know what, I'm going to see how this is. And within minutes, I was I was like, I I've got a new understanding. I'm having I can have a blast. And not only am I not it's not that I'm doing it without alcohol, the, the without alcohol part left me. I was just having a blast. Right. And it just, You're making connections. You're having yeah. something special though too because right. it is nice to go out at night and have a special dinner and a special drink yeah it's well yeah, you know what, the, one of the biggest things Susie that I I deal with talking to very common thread is I deserve this you know it's like I you know I work hard all day and give me you know give me my this cocktail I deserve this and I feel right. like saying, you know what? You do deserve this. You deserve even more. But what, right. what is is that what you deserve? Because you're 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 rewarding yourself with all the stuff that I, you know, waking up at four o'clock with the cold sweats, the anxiety, the regret tomorrow, the 
all the crap that came along with it. And I had to think, you know what? I deserve a hell of a lot more than that. So if I'm going to, it's nice to have the options to give myself something because yeah, I do deserve it. When right. I get it. Yes, you do. And I think we all deserve a choice. When you go out to a nice restaurant, there should be a nice alcohol-free cocktail and it should be on the menu. And I think it's happening. And I think it's going to be happening in most places yeah. pretty soon. Yeah. But, but, I did, but I deserve a night out. I deserve a night of the sober in the city where I deserve to be with friends. I deserve to have good food. I deserve to enjoy music. I deserve everything that I got with that. And until I tried it, I didn't believe that I could have fun at those events. Well, I'm excited too. You know, part, part of it, part of the excitement is, is that every day we're learning about a new, a new spiritless, uh, alcoholic, uh, new spirit, non-alcoholic spirit. And I mean, you go to Josh's and you're like, you're, <clears throat> you're blown out of the water. And how, right. how cool is it that you can do that even in your own home to have those offerings? Like we had campaign that was ridiculous. Joyous. Can you talk a little bit about Joyous? Um, they are they're <laughs> a local Austin, right? They um, they're based in Seattle. Oh, okay. I believe that most of their grapes actually come from California. And so speaking of new. This is their brand new Cabernet that actually came in the mail today. <laughs> Cabernet is hard. So I'm, I have heard that it's very good. Yeah. Um, I have not been able to try it yet. It just arrived today and they actually send in the packaging information like this behaves like wine. So when you get this wine, it needs to settle um, for a bit of time. And when you open it, it should breathe. So I'm not, I'm not going to drink it for at least a few days to start it. But, um, you know, I have really enjoyed their sparkling. Uh, they have a rosé and a sparkling white that I have had before. It is very good. And we will be featuring um, that at Silver in the City, actually, as well as Groovy, too, will be there. So, you know, they're very different and really two very nice choices. But kind of particularly exciting about the the Cabernet it's just something different and something that's really been challenging uh for many alcohol free vintners so just, yeah you know, maybe maybe I'm stealing Danny's line but you know sober in the city it's it's uh when you look at everything that's going on with a night like that and it's so to have an option that is everything but the buzz you know every bit that you're looking for is is there and Right. And uh, well, I'll be honest that since I have attended a couple of sober in, in the cities and some of Chris's Sands Bar events, uh, another event here in Southern California where we had very good drinks made by Ian Blessing just up the street from you, Peggy. Mm -hmm. I'm a little spoiled now. So, you know, I have to admit that when I go into a restaurant and <laughs> and they have club soda and cranberry, it, it is a little disappointing, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you kind of have to have a good attitude about it, I think, because they really just don't know yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, some of them are realizing it, but they really just don't know yet. So, you know, if you could just, just say with a smile, like it would be nice to have something on the menu, make suggestions. I think it helps them to know yeah, I got invited over to the golf ladies. I don't golf, but we played a golf card game. <laughs> it's fun though. It was super fun. We'll talk about that later, but I think I actually will put that game in my um, raffle box that we're doing for Sober in the City. Because it was, oh, it was awesome. really fun. But, you know, yeah. she asked me, do you mind if I serve wine? And I said, no. And I brought over my athletic uh, upside down and she started to put it in a really crappy glass and I and I said no you know can you just put it in a wine glass for me and she's like sure yeah. but it, it started a conversation you know they they said oh, the only um alcohol free beer we knew about was Odul's and there's nothing wrong with Odul's but that athletics right. made it one of the biggest businesses on the planet and my husband drinks it my my son yeah. actually drank it the other day and didn't realize that it was zero proof 
And he's like, wow, this right? beer is so good. It's really good stuff. And we deserve, right. you know, we deserve to drink differently. You know, we drink differently. We deserve um, a place at the table, my friend Susie said. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, anything you'd like us to know that, that we didn't ask you or any, any, um, any yeah, party? Yeah, well, I think, comments? yeah, I, I think the goal is, you know, and I, I'm still sort of focusing and refocusing, adjusting. And this is kind of a little bit new to me about once a week, I ask myself, what the hell are you doing? But, um, <laughs> you know, I think the goal is like, let's, let's validate an alcohol free lifestyle, mm -hmm. an alcohol free choice. I was chatting with my sister in law is in town this afternoon. And she keeps her eye out for menus, I think, you know, I've sort of made her a little more aware of it and she enjoys now a mocktail, not all the time, but sometimes. So she was expressing how when they were in Las Vegas at the Wynn hotel, they make great mocktails with key, you know, super ingredients. And it was very enjoyable other places, you know, not so much. So I think it's, it's just about that, like providing an option for everyone. Uh, I love it. You, you know, the, 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 and, my advice, my advice to anyone is uh, these types of uh, events. You can always go back. You know, if you can, if you're willing to just open, you know, and say, "I'm going to give this a shot with the right attitude." Hey, this is not a, this isn't a, a tattoo. It's not permanent. If you're, you, you know, you try it for the night, you can always go back. This is just explore and give yourself the opportunity because I finally did. And when I did, I can't believe how pleasantly surprised I was. Yeah, and it's I, not just about it's not just about people that had a problem with alcohol either. It, you know, it's pregnant women, it's people mm -hmm. that are very health conscious that really, you know, really don't want to 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 drink alcohol anymore. Um, we well, people want to have fun and not and not and people want to have fun and not have the consequences. You know, they mm -hmm. want to still. Right. I don't want to just. To avoid getting a DUI or I don't want to, my option is, okay, sit by yourself and you can watch TV in your room alone tonight. That's how you're going to, no, I don't want to live like that. I want to, I want to exactly. live. I want to have fun. Mm -hmm. So for me to go out to an event like this with an open mind and say, you know, maybe I'll, let's give it a shot and see. And I was like, oh, I had a, I had a, I have a blast. I, and it was like, wow, I, I don't need that. If you want to go back, mm -hmm. great. Balance it out. I don't. I'm not going to tell anyone how to live their life. I'm just saying, if it's something right. worth. And why do you keep telling me how to live mine? Um, <laughs> let's not go there, okay? Who oh, yells? At me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I'll just say, like, thank you for having me on, yeah. Jeff, because I think, you know, just getting the word out that there are 150 people flying in from Alaska, California, Maine, Florida, Australia, and England for an alcohol-free dinner event plus weekend. I think that really shows some validation yeah. to someone who says, I'm kind of looking at an alcohol-free lifestyle, or I'm kind of thinking this is something that I want to do for a little longer. Yeah. I think that provides some, from some support. It, it does. There. Cause it's like, and you know, confidence. I'm not going to make that kind of a travel commitment, the, the cost and all of that. If I think that it's going to be sitting and I'm going to get now hate mail from librarians, <laughs> but you know what I mean? If, if where it's going to be, uh -huh. that's I, the people that are doing this believe and, and maybe have experienced that this is what a great event this is going to be. It's, there, it's, it's fun. We are so excited. We ah! are so excited. <laughs> you, did, you did not mention before we go, you did not mention the dopamine. Um, what is it called? Dopamine. Oh, yeah. The dopamine dance uh, so, class. Yeah, that's that's one of our most popular. I got uh, my very sparkly. Um, I got a pink sparkly shirt for that that event. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So I'm still got a shop to find something to compete with uh, Peggy, Jeff. I hope, I hope you're going to be there, Jeff. 
I'll be back in my room watching the game. I don't know what game, but any game, if there's a dance. (laughs) (laughs) I've I've broken too many ankles. I've injured too many people on the dance floor. So Uh, Okay. On account of the ankles. All right. Okay. I haven't that ankle and I'm doing it. So what's your excuse? Uh, Well, um, so so much. And how, how did, if people want to get on your mailing list or what do they do? Yeah, so the easiest way is Zero Proof Experiences mm-hmm. on Instagram or Facebook. If you just send me a DM and I will add you to the list, that would be fantastic. I'd love to get to know you. Still yeah. trying to determine where we're going next year? Uh, yes. Chat yes. lit up with uh, Cleveland, um, Boston, East Coast. There's a few. Um, yeah. No, Annette, we're I, not doing the middle of Indiana, so that ain't gonna happen. Oh uh, um, man, <laughs> are there any votes for Maine? Please, please vote for Maine. I am Toron- in love Toron- with Maine. We got a Toronto in there. Toronto is so. pretty cool, though. So Florida, maybe Southern California again in the winter, but yeah. Well, the what's Annette- your vote? Um, actually, I could go with Annette on the uh, Indiana that's so close. That would work out real nice for me. So I could deal with some, yeah. <laughs> some, some Hoosier time. But no, I um, I just think the variety is... is uh... Yeah. Tell Jane, Jane, we could, if we have it, if we have it in Maine, that's close enough to Toronto. I think yeah. oh, that's doable for her. Yeah. I'm voting for Maine. So, all right. Okay. Thank well, you. Look, um, <laughs> Thanks so much, Susie. And um, because I'm on location, don't have the music. Peggy, you're going to sing us out, right? No, unless I want to change the migration <laughs> pattern of geese. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, my voice feels faint, so that ain't going to happen. But Susie, okay. thanks so much. And we'll see you um, November 11th and 12th. That's oh, yeah. Be and, <laughs> Thank uh, you. And we'll all talk right. to you. Love you. You know that. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon, okay? Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Peggy. Bye.